Hi, I'm Brita, the Questioning Quilter, and this is the fifth in my series of disappearing blocks. Now this is a four color disappearing hourglass called Double Vision, and shout out to Donna DeAngelis for coming up with such a great name. Now I made this quilt with five inch charms, so if you stick around to the end and help me out, you could win this beautiful charm pack. Now. This quilt might look complicated with all these little triangles, but it's really straightforward and starts with this pretty little hourglass block. Let me show you. This is a disappearing hourglass quilt, which starts off with an hourglass, which starts off with four five inch squares of fabric. You're going to need one white, one black, one dark, and one light for each block. Now, five inch squares is the perfect size for a charm. So whether you buy these charms pre-cut, you cut up yardage, or you turn your beautiful scraps into lovely pre-cuts, it doesn't matter. The first step is the same. You're going to take your colored fabrics and sort them into three piles, light, medium, and dark. And for this project, we only need the light and dark. So we're going to set the medium ones aside for now. To make each block, we're going to take one of the dark fabrics and match it with the white, one of the light fabrics, and match it with the black. Now we need to turn these into half square triangles. So we're just going to turn these right sides together, going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on this fabric, and then as we normally do, you're going to sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. When you do that, you have this. We're going to cut along this line, open it up and press it to the dark. And when you finish doing that, you will have four lovely half square triangles. Now, here's one of the fun things about this. This quilt is what I call charm pack friendly. And what that means is the exact size of these squares isn't critically important. So if your quarter inch seam is really good and all these squares come out the same, that's fine, you can leave them a little bigger. If like me, they come out a little wonky, I trim these down to four and a half by four and a half. Either way is fine. Now, to turn this into an hourglass, you put the two dark colors facing each other, the two light colors facing each other. We've got the white, black, white, black on the corners. That's how you know this is right. The black and white go to the outside. Now, I like my scrap quilts to be a little more scrappy than this. So what does I, I do is I take all of my half square triangles, I cut them out, and I grab some at random. I've got two that are black and two that are white. And I'll turn these into the hourglass. So we're gonna take the two dark opposite each other in the hourglass and the two light opposite each other in the hourglass, black and white on the outside. So once you have that, sew it together, you'll have this beautiful hourglass block. Now, here's where the disappearing part comes in. We are going to cut this up. So we're going to cut this from this center seam. We're gonna cut one and a quarter inches all the way around, four cuts. Now, I always like to put a piece of tape here next to the one and a quarter inch mark or whatever, whatever size I need for the block that I'm making. So we're gonna make four cuts. So one, two. Now people have noticed that I don't put the tape exactly on the ruler line. Well, that's because I am not marking, lining the center seam up with the tape. I'm lining it up with the one and a quarter marks on my ruler, and I want to be able to see them through the, on the other side of the tape. And the reason I do this is I will, if I don't have the tape, I'll put it like this and start to cut on the one inch. It's like, oh no, no, there's tape. It needs to be one and a quarter. So we'll cut this up. Now, here's where the easy part comes in. We're gonna be doing some trading. We're gonna trade these pieces. So the upper left is going to go to the upper right 
and rotate it so this little dark corner is to the outside. The upper left goes to the upper right. So now this little pink triangle goes to the outside. I'm going to do the same here. We're going to turn these so that that little mark goes to the outside and the little mark goes to the outside. You'll know you have it right when the white is connected to the light and the dark is connected to the black. So they look a almost like little arrows coming in, light and dark. And when you sew them together, they look like this. Nice block. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, ring the bell, stick around to the end so you get a chance to win some great prizes. So we're going to take four of these squares and put them into what I call a motif. So we're going to take this black corner and we're going to put it towards the center. So we're going to put all four of these. You'll see they have two black corners, so it really doesn't matter which one you put to the center. But when you get them together, look, you have this great black square with the light diamond in the center. Now, if we take three more of those mo motifs and put them together, well, you can start to say that not only do we make more of these black squares with the light centers, we also end up making white squares with the dark centers. And when they're sewn together, they look like this. Isn't it amazing how such a simple square can make such a beautiful quilt? Now, I was giving a lecture to Block Party Quilters in Seattle last week, and at the end I showed them this quilt as kind of a sneak peek, and one of the guild members asked me, well, how do you plan on finishing it? And I immediately thought, wait, what? Fin I kind of thought it was finished. Uh, what, a binding, a border, what, what, it, what, I don't know, what? And in a state of blind panic, I said, well, how would you finish it? And she said, well, what if you took one of these blocks and you cut it down the center or ripped it, basically made two half blocks and you put these together to finish these squares. And I immediately thought, oh my gosh, that's genius. You could take, if you made enough of them, you could go all the way around this quilt like this just putting more to make a, a border and these edges would look finished. So I said, wow, you're a genius. I am definitely going to steal. Um, uh, I mean, give you full credit for this idea. Now, unfortunately, I didn't make enough of these extra squares. So mine is just going to stay unfinished looking, but you can make it look like this. Now, here is where you can help me and be entered for a chance to win. Complete details are in the description below. But what I need from you is your opinion. Now, crazy as it seems, these disappearing quilts aren't the only ones that I make. And my son seemed to think that you would be interested in watching me make some of these quilts. For example, my guild has a challenge for the end of the year, which um, I probably ought to get started on. And I have a baby quilt to make for my youngest grandson. Now, these wouldn't be the short 10-minute tutorials. They'd be kind of a longer form, hey, watch me make something. Now, I have zero idea if this is something that you would be interested in or not. The other thing that I was thinking is maybe a series of introduction to quilting or basic things like rulers and fabrics and bindings, oh my. Um, but I'm also thinking, well, you all know how to quilt, which is why you're here watching this video. So maybe instead of doing these other things, I should keep concentrating and focus on making just these tutorials. You know, stick with what works. So let me know what you think. For every comment after you're subscribed, you get a chance to win. And then if you share this or any of my videos on social media and tag me, you will get an additional chance to win. First prize gets this wonderful charm pack from Tonga. Second and third prizes will get patterns from my website. 
So, let me know what you think. Stay well and happy quilting.